In the deepest, darkest places of Middle Earth, there lie creatures. Creatures that neither serve the Dark Lord nor fear him. Creatures both perilous and evil. Today on Nerd of the Rings, we cover the Watcher in the Water and the Nameless Things of Moria. The nameless things that dwelt in the depths of the world are some of the most mysterious beings in all of Middle Earth. Our first clue of their existence came even before we meet the Watcher in the Water in the Fellowship of the Ring. It is in The Hobbit where Tolkien gives us our first indication there were older and fouler things than orcs in the deep places of the world. There are strange things living in the pools and lakes in the hearts of mountains. Fish whose fathers swam in, goodness only knows how many years ago, and never swam out again. While their eyes grew bigger and bigger and bigger from trying to see in the blackness. Also, there are other things more slimy than fish. Even in the tunnels and caves the goblins have made for themselves, there are other things living unbeknown to them that have sneaked in from the outside to lie up in the dark. Some of these caves too go back in their beginnings to ages before the goblins, who only widened them and joined them up with passages. And the original owners are still there in odd corners, slinking and nosing about. So the nameless things predate any orcs digging their passages through the mountains around Goblin Town. But just how old are they? Well, as we learn in the History of Middle-earth volume titled Morgoth's Ring, the nameless things were likely there since the very creation of the world. Out of the discords of the music, not directly out of either of the themes, Eru's or Melkor's, but of their dissonance with regard to one another, evil things appeared in Arda, which did not descend from any direct plan or vision of Melkor. They were not his children, and therefore, since all evil hates, hated him too. While Sauron was among the Maiar and Valar who were present at the creation of the world, we are told that Sauron also does not know of these ancient evil creatures. The music of the Ainur, in which Eru, the god of Tolkien's world, creates the world and everything in it, apparently has some, for lack of a better term, byproducts, unknown to even the higher powers of Arda. Many believe that among these byproducts, may have been characters like the giant spider-like creature Ungoliant, Tom Bombadil, and of course, the Nameless Things. While many remain an absolute mystery, there would be one dark creature from the depths of the Misty Mountains we would learn a bit about, the Watcher in the Water. This was some kind of water-dwelling creature, and while we don't get a full view of it in the books, we know that it has long, pale green tentacles that had fingered ends. The tentacles themselves seem to have a glowing aspect about them, and they far outnumber any real-life squid or even the fictional kraken, with 21 such appendages being visible when it appears in The Lord of the Rings. On January 13, 3019, the Fellowship of the Ring makes their way to the doors of Durin in an attempt to traverse Khazad Dûm. They come to the walls of Moria, where they see the river Cyrenon, which had once flowed past the doors of Durin down to the elvish city of Austin Ethil, had been dammed either by chance or design. Now, where there was once a flowing stream, there was a dark and ominous lake. Personally, I believe this collection of water allowed for or caused the opening of a connection between the lake and the deep underground waters beneath the mountain. This allows for the passage and emergence of one of these evil, nameless things, the Watcher. Just as the Fellowship finally succeeds in opening the doorway, they are attacked by this creature. It grabs Frodo by the foot and attempts to drag him into the lake. After Sam slashes at the tentacle that grabbed Frodo, he is released and the group retreats through the doorway, pursued by several of these tentacles. The doors of Durin are slammed shut by the creature, 
and judging by the sounds heard from the other side, the watcher had blocked the doors by uprooting two great trees on either side. Now within Moria, Gandalf draws attention to the fact that the monster had gone after Frodo first of all the Fellowship. This seems to indicate that the creature itself was influenced by the One Ring. As we know from the story of Isildur's death, dark forces such as orcs can indeed be drawn to the ring itself. As the Fellowship makes their way through Khazad-dûm, they finally come to the chamber of Mazarbul, discovering the book where they learn that this was not the first time the Watcher in the Water struck out at the door of Moria. As Balin's expedition to reclaim Moria was overrun by orcs and Balin himself killed, a group of dwarves make their way to the West Gate in an attempt to find escape, an attempt that would prove deadly. Gandalf reads of it in the Book of Mazarbul. The pool is up to the wall at West Gate. The Watcher in the Water took Owen. We cannot get out. The end comes. Drums. Drums in the deep. They are coming. Thus we learn that this evil tentacled creature had indeed killed Gimli's uncle, and with the water all the way up to the doors themselves, any hope for the dwarves escape was gone. They were trapped between the Watcher and the orcs, forced to make their final stand in the chamber of Balin's throne, the chamber that now held his tomb. In the two towers we get one final insight into the nameless things after Gandalf returns as Gandalf the White. He describes his fateful duel with the Balrog of Morgoth to the three hunters. Then we plunged into the deep water, and all was dark. Cold it was as the tide of death. Almost it froze my heart. Deep is the abyss that is spanned by Durin's bridge, and none have measured it, said Gimli. Yet it has a bottom beyond light and knowledge," said Gandalf. Thither I came at last, to the uttermost foundations of stone. He was with me still, his fire was quenched, but now he was a thing of slime, stronger than a strangling snake. We fought far under the living earth, where time is not counted. Ever he clutched me, and ever I hewed him, till at last he fled into dark tunnels. They were not made by Durin's folk. Far, far below the deepest delving of the dwarves, the world is gnawed by nameless things. Even Sauron knows them not. They are older than he. Now I have walked there, but I will bring no report to darken the light of day. In that despair, my enemy was my only hope, and I pursued him, clutching at his heel. Thus he brought me back at last to the secret ways of Khazad-dûm. Too well he knew them all. Ever up now we went, until we came to the Endless Stair. Here Gandalf reiterates what we know about the nameless things, burrowing in the deepest places of the world dark places of which Gandalf would not even speak in the light of day. Evidently, the Balrog, who had lived in these deep places for thousands of years, had come to know these dark tunnels, where dwelt the vicious and nameless things of Middle-earth. Now, today's video was a bit shorter, but be sure to join us tomorrow, December 19th, for a Fellowship of the Ring watch party stream celebrating 20 years since its theatrical release. It'll feature some of my Tolkien friends and your comments from the live chat. For more info on how this will work, check out the link in the description. As for the nameless things, I wanna hear your theories. Let me know in the comments what you think these creatures may have looked like. As always, I wanna say a huge thank you to my Patreon supporters who make this channel possible. Tom DeBombadil19, Kella Brimbor, Jim Limber Davis, Listen Me the Cinda, Mandu Pandu, Sky Carcass, Slide Belts, Dane Ragnarsson, Salim Rahman, Zetrock, Berto Berg, Grand Strategy Nerd, Graham Derricott, 
the dark-haired one, Wyland, and Debbie. If you enjoyed the artwork in this video, check out the artists in the description and purchase prints of their great work for yourself. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you next time on Nerd of the Rings.